Hey everybody, we're going to be looking at curved mirrors today. So I'm sure you've looked at your reflection in a spoon and you notice your reflection is different depending on which side of the spoon you're looking at. That's the kind of thing we're going to be looking at today. So the two types of curved mirrors and it's like the two sides of the spoon. So when you're looking at the back of the spoon like that, where it's curving out towards you, that's called a convex mirror. And then if you're looking inside the spoon where it's curving away from you, kind of like you're looking into a cave, it's called a concave mirror. So the convex mirrors, uh, you see these a lot in stores. Uh, this looks like it might be a jewelry store or something like that. The advantage is it gives you a wide field of vision. And so here's another one, same type of thing. Um, you also see these at corners and hallways, uh, like hospitals I've seen them, or warehouses. They have them in places like that, or some people have them at the end of their driveway. If, if that's an obstructed view, they'll have a, a convex mirror to see the traffic coming. And then another example is the Bean in Chicago. So I want you to look at these images and think, what do they all have in common? Okay, well, I'll tell you. One thing is all the images are upright. If you remember the images in the spoon, one was upright, one was upside down. All these images are upright and they all are small. These images look pretty small compared to how big the object is. And this is what's going to happen with convex mirrors. Let's take a look why. So here's a convex mirror and we've got uh, light rays coming in parallel to the axis. If we just draw a straight line through the center of this. Uh, all these light rays are coming in parallel to the axis. Each light ray is going to obey the law of reflection. So the one coming directly in right here, there's a 90 degree angle that it makes with respect to the, the surface of the mirror. It'll reflect just straight back. The one up here, it's coming in at an angle, so we could draw a normal line in here. Angle of incidence equals angle of reflection, so it'll reflect that way and so on. So all of these reflected rays diverge. So another word for convex mirror is a diverging mirror. All the light rays are going away from each other, they're diverging. Now they're all diverging away from a point. And if we follow, if we extend these reflected rays back, we see they get to this point back here. We call that the focal length of that mirror. So they're all diverging away from the focal length. So let's see how these images are formed. All right, so here's an object. And uh, if we remember yesterday, we talked about there has to be light shining on that object. So whether it's the sun or some light fixture, you've got light shining on it. And we're just going to look at the tip of the object. And high school physics, we make it very simple. We just draw an upright arrow and that's our object. It could be a person, it could be anything. So if we look at the tip of this arrow, we've got light rays coming in. And remember, they're going to reflect in every direction. We're only going to look at three specific light rays out of the gazillions that are reflected off of it. So one light ray reflects off the tip of that arrow and it goes directly into the mirror parallel to that axis. So if it comes in parallel to the axis, we know it's going to reflect away from that focal point. Another ray is going to go towards that focal point on the other side and reflect back parallel to the axis. So it's kind of opposite of that first one. And then the third one goes to this point over here. So it's called the center of curvature. So if you imagine this convex mirror were a sphere, this would be the very center of that sphere. And then the focal point is just halfway between the center and the mirror. Okay, so this third ray, it goes towards that center of curvature. That happens to be where it hits at 90 degrees. It will reflect directly back. So these reflected rays diverge. All right, now if you are out here and you're looking at these rays, your brain is going to see these three rays coming at you and then your brain processes that and it extends them back and it appears that they're all coming from this location right over here on the other side of the mirror. So that's kind of how this works. It's called a virtual image. Uh, we'll talk more about that another day, but it looks like these rays are coming from this point. Now that is just the tip of this object. We could draw a gazillion other rays along the whole height of this object, they're going to do the same thing as these three, and then we're going to locate them along the height of this image over here. Now, it doesn't matter where we slide this object closer to the mirror, farther away, we're always going to get this general uh, relationship where the image will be small and upright, just like we saw in those examples. So that's a convex mirror. 
one common example of convex mirrors uh, is the passenger side rear view mirror in a car. So if you notice the words on there, you've probably read it, objects and mirror are closer than they appear because the image here is smaller. This is a convex mirror. It makes a smaller upright image. And the advantage that again is to get a wider field of view so you can see the cars over there. Um, but again, it's, it's making that smaller image so it appears that that truck is farther away than it actually is. So they have to put those words on there. Okay, concave mirrors. Here is a concave mirror. So it's like looking into the, uh, the inside part of a spoon. So you notice this guy's image is upside down. Here's another concave mirror, different image. So now the image is right side up and pretty big. So very different um, outcome depending on where you're at. And then in this image, it's showing both of these. So this person's hand, the image is very big and right side up. And then the things in the background, that park bench behind her, are upside down. So we've got a combination of this mirror and a combination of this mirror. They're all the same type of mirror. It just depends on where that object is located. So let's take a look at that. With these concave mirrors, if we have light coming in parallel, it will reflect off the surface. And it's, each ray is going to obey the law of reflection. So this one coming directly in will reflect directly back. The one coming in up here, we could draw a normal line here. Angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. It'll reflect along this line. So all these light rays reflect through a single point. We call this converging. They all converge to a single point. We call that the focal point. So a concave mirror, another name for that is a converging mirror because these light rays converge at a single point. So to see an image in these mirrors, all right, so here's the object. We're going to do a similar thing as the last one. We've got a lot of light rays coming in. Uh, they're reflecting off in all these directions, but we're only going to look at three of them. So one is going to reflect parallel to the axis and then reflect through the focal point, just so we, like we saw in the previous image. Uh, one will go through the focal point and then reflect back parallel to the axis. And then one goes as if it's going away from that center of curvature. And that's where it's going to hit at 90 degrees and reflect back on itself. So these three reflected rays converge to a single point. So if you're out here and you're looking at this, it looks like these rays are coming from this point right here. So that's where the tip of our image is located. And just like before, we could draw a gazillion rays along the height of this object, and they just line up along the height of the image as well. So this gives us that upside down image. Now, the next one is really the same thing. So they drew the object upside down. That doesn't matter. Uh, but if we draw the light rays coming off of this, one going parallel to the axis reflect through the focal point, one going through the focal point, reflecting back parallel to the axis, and then third going through that center of curvature, reflecting on itself. All these reflected rays converge to this point. So the image will be located right there. And this is where we're gonna get a smaller inverted image. Notice I say inverted because it's relative to the object. The image is right side up, but the object was upside down. So we still call that inverted because it's relative to the object. Notice in the previous one, we had a bigger inverted image and that all depends on where the object is located here the object is between the focal point and the center of curvature so we get a bigger uh, inverted image and then in this one the object is well outside that center of curvature we get a smaller inverted image now the other situation we get with these concave mirrors is uh, with that that guy where his head was upright and large so that's if the object is inside the focal point. We again draw the rays and you know gazillions are coming off. We're just drawing these three parallel reflecting through the focal point and then uh, as if it's coming away from the center of curvature reflecting back through the center of curvature and then the third one we can't go through the focal point so we're going to go away from the focal point and reflect parallel to the axis. Now in this situation the rays diverge so if we're out here looking at it our brain extends these rays back and it looks like they're all coming from this location, which is on the other side of the mirror. Again, that virtual image, we'll talk about that another day. Uh, but if you notice, the image now is right side up 
and it's bigger than the object. So this is that case where that guy saw his big head in the mirror. Here's the common example of that, if you haven't figured that out already, a makeup mirror. So a makeup mirror is a converging mirror. It is concave. You may not have noticed that. Next time you're looking in one, just look at it very closely and you should see a slight curvature inside on that. So this means that when you see a large image of your eye, your nose, whatever you're looking at, that means you're actually inside the focal point. You can set that mirror on the counter and then look at it and back away. There's going to be some point where all of a sudden your image is going to flip upside down. Now you're outside the focal point and you look at and you see one of those first two cases we looked at with the concave mirrors. So the concave mirrors, they do multiple things. They can create the right side up big image or they can create the upside down image. So you have to be careful with that. Um, here's just a bunch of makeup mirrors. I was looking for images and I, I searched magnifying mirrors and this is all I found. Bunch of these. Other curved things. So this is uh, a picture out of the book and these are all mirrored surfaces. And then up here we've got what it says, an oil filled pipe. So this is uh, an energy plant, a thermal energy plant. They're using uh, the heat to create electrical energy. So the sun's rays come in here and the sun is so far away, the rays that heat here are essentially parallel to each other. They're gonna reflect through the focal point, which is right where that oil filled pipe is located. So all the energy that's hitting these is concentrated at that one point and it'll heat up quite a bit and create that thermal energy. So it kind of amplifies the energy coming from the sun. Here's another one, a satellite dish. Same thing if you have direct TV or dish network, uh, you've got a smaller version of this, but it works the same way. You've got radio signals, which is light, coming in from the satellite. Again, so far away that when they hit the dish, they're essentially parallel. They reflect to the focal point where you've got the receiver there. So if you were just to have the receiver there, you wouldn't get a very strong signal. You want to capture a big area of those radio waves into a single point to kind of amplify that again. Here's another example. If you've watched football games, you, you often see these guys on the sidelines with these uh, parabolic shaped microphones. That's what they are. So it's to pick up more of the sound of the game, just like the satellite, uh, the satellite dish there. So the sound waves come in here, they reflect off that surface and there's a microphone right at the focal point. So again, you're not just getting a small section of sound waves, you're gonna get a a bigger area of that and they reflect to that single point. Another great example at the Museum of Science and Industry right there in Chicago, they've got the whispering hallway. So what you do is you can't really see it, but there's another one of these on the other end of the room. And then there's footprints right here. You stand facing this and then your friend stands over there facing the other way and you whisper into this and then they can hear you. And you can do this. There can be people in this room talking and everything. You can still hear each other. It's pretty cool. But again, you are now like at the microphone or the, the receiver location. You're whispering. Your voice goes in all different directions. But when they hit that parabolic reflector, they're going to go parallel. And then they go parallel to each other to the other end where they're going to reflect to the focal point where your friend is standing and they can hear you. So it's pretty cool. This effect also occurs at our school. If you've been at um, a couple of the stairwells where it's, it's got the, the rounded area, there are certain spots in there where you can stand and, and you just hear a lot of sound, big noises. And, and that's just, you're at that a focal point where a lot of those sound waves are reflecting off the wall and right to that point. It's kind of cool. Now, one example of a convex mirror. <laughs> Okay, so a disco ball, there you go, convex mirror, just a bunch of tiny flat mirrors glued on a, a sphere like that, but anyway. Okay, so uh, next we're gonna take a look at a demo for how we can capture the sun's energy and do some pretty cool stuff with it. Okay, we're about 94 million miles from the sun, or 150 million kilometers, and I've got this makeup mirror, and we know that it's a concave mirror, converging mirror, so it should have a focal point where all the rays come in and reflect to a single point. So I'm going to hold this piece of paper at that focal point while I aim the mirror at the sun. Let's see what happens.
there you go. Energy from the sun, all it's hitting is this little area right there, and that much energy can burn paper that quickly and easily. 94 million miles away. All right, so let's summarize some things that we've learned today. All light rays hitting any mirror are going to obey the law of reflection. If it's a flat mirror, pretty straightforward. If it's curved, they still obey the law of reflection. Convex mirrors. So they always diverge light. They always do the same thing. They're very consistent. Uh, they're also called diverging mirrors because they always diverge light. The image will always be upright and smaller than the object. So these are used for security mirrors in stores, uh, passenger side rear view mirror in cars, uh, and disco balls. Well, also some trucks you see on their outside rear view mirrors, uh, the, the driver's side one is just flat, but you'll see a, a round section where it's bubbled out like that. Yeah, it's just a little mini convex mirror to give them a wider field of view. Concave mirrors, they are able to diverge and converge light. It depends on where that object is located. So they're also called converging mirrors. Even though they can diverge, if the light rays are coming in parallel, they will converge that, so we call them converging mirrors. Image can be inverted and smaller or larger than the object, as we saw. Or the image can be upright. If it is upright, it's going to be bigger than the object. So those are the makeup mirrors used for applying mascara and stuff like that. Okay, that's it for the curved mirrors. Uh, shoot me an email if you have any questions.